Well, welcome to another Memphis Monday, Memphis Monday 155. Uh, today we're going to build the engine cowling for the uh, uh, for our boat. Uh, it's going to be uh, made out of uh, marine plywood and treated uh, treated pine. Turns out pretty good. I think you can in just over on the left over there you can see it. It's already finished, and I think it's going to be a pretty fun adventure. Not too. Uh, not too long, but I think I we I think we found a few takeaways, and uh, it's going to be pretty fun. Next week will, will be our our big uh, uh, three year anniversary. Uh, we'll have a we'll have uh, maybe five minutes of footage on a uh, on week 52's project, uh, but then we're going to have the year in review where we review all 52. Uh, weeks, all the projects involved with that. I think there's about 60 of them, and it should be uh, pretty fun. If you remember last uh, last year's uh, year in review, I found it kind of interesting. But anyway, we're not going to get anything done. We're not going to get that cowling done. We're not going to get anything done unless we do what? That's right. Let's knock off the chit chat and get to work. My wife is uh, is mad at me. She doesn't understand why I spent all this time and money fixing up a boat I never use. This board here will provide a ledge to put the electrical buses uh, that will feed the, both the engine and the dashboard. But I see that my cowling's not high enough. It'll interfere. These uh, wires will be rubbing against it if I don't raise this up. So I'm going to raise this up. So I know my bus bar here has got to be raised up uh, about an inch and a half or so. So the easiest, there are two ways to do it, completely rebuild the thing, and that would be silly. Um, or just flip the thing over and put a, another, just thicken this base here. And that'll raise the whole thing up. So I'm using the treated de deck wood uh, to build this thing. And I don't recommend using treated deck wood for uh, projects ordinarily. But this thing's going to be wet and so forth. Um, but let me show you the problems you can get into. I'm uh, trying to cut some one and a half inch sections off of a 2 by 6 you can see uh, how it's bowed up and what causes that is there's a stresses in the wood and the board you cut it from can be perfectly straight that's because the all the uh, stresses in the wood have all equalized out and made the board straight but then when you cut it uh, this is what you can run into now here's uh, part of that wood I already cut the the ends off, which I, I thought were probably the uh, where most of the stresses were. But this part right here is still bowed. You can see the bow in it. And all I'm doing here is I'm putting it on a board, and I'm going to run it through the table saw and make a a straight edge here uh, to see if I can uh, get the other boards off. So let's see if that works. Now I can take that that edge we just that straight edge we had right here and we put it against the fence and see if we can get some straight boards off there. So you can see that even after I straighten that board, when I cut it, it's still it's still bowed out. You can see why I'm building this thing up on the workbench instead of in the boat. The other one was uh, my other engine cowling that I took out. I built it into the boat and it was a nightmare to build. It was a nightmare to work on. Uh, it was just a nightmare all the way around. But this thing is going to be 
this thing's going to be removable. These are meant to be put in with joist hanger nails, uh, but I, don't, I couldn't find mine, so I'm using uh, uh, roofing nails. If you use screws, it looks really amateur hour because the screws, these aren't uh, countersunk, and the screws, you know, are way out of the wood. But this will work uh, just as good. We refinished this uh, hatch cover and we we're thinking about using it on our new cowling. But the problem is this thing is made out of uh, uh, red oak, which is just about as unweather resistant as you can get. So we're going to use marine plywood for our new top. So instead of using that red oak, we're going to use um, three quarter inch marine plywood. Now we won't be putting any edge on, uh, any edge banding or trim or anything on it. Let me show you how we're going to line it up. And since we're building the, the uh, cowling outside the boat, there won't be any gymnastics. Uh, there won't be any tricky measurements. We'll be able to just uh, line up the cowling on top of the deck and install our cleats all the way around uh, for our hatch cover. So now I have it just where I want it. I can just go around here and mark the exact position of the frame. And then I can take the frame off and position the hatch cover uh, cleats. These uh, hatch cleats are going to be held in place with pocket screws. No glue. Before we put the uh, sides on our cowling, let's uh, let's put let's put the frame back in the boat see how it works. I want this frame to just naturally fit over this motor. Well, it seems to fit. Sliding the, the uh, top back a little bit. You can see that here's our bus board. Uh, this bus board will have the uh, positive and the negative uh, battery leads you know unlike a car you have to have a, you have to have a, a grounding uh, a strap for everything you can't just hook it into the frame and then our dashboard here have a lot of wires and stuff that'll come out and they can go right over to the bus board for power and the dashboard of course is uh, removable uh, so I can take the Dash, dashboard off and work on the gauge wiring. And the hatch is slidable to the back. Okay, everything seems to fit so far. Now we got to uh, put the sides on and the back on. The sides and the back will consist of a removable frame that will cover this opening. And then in the, in the middle, on the frame, will be uh, some of that uh, beadboard uh, plywood we've used on we used on the kitchen doors uh, a while back. So all the uh, boards will have this little rabbit uh, carved in them, and that'll go on the inside. And then our beadboard will fit right in that rabbit. It, it, it's, uh, the rabbit is just a little bit deeper than the beadboard. I'm mass producing the, uh, the stock. What I'm doing is I'm putting, I'm cutting it to width and putting the rabbit in all the uh, stock before I cut it to size. Here I'm doing the rabbit. Um, what, what makes this tough is it's pretty aggressive. It's, uh, it's about 3 8 inch deep. 
and it's three quarter inch wide. So I'm taking quite a bit off with every pass. So it's uh, not easy. Now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and put those rabbits in all 10 of these boards right here. Actually, all 12 of them. And then we'll go on from there. Well, you just saw me cutting this stock down to uh, two and a half inches. This is the, uh, the original stock is that is three and a half and I cut an inch a inch off of it now I'm going to take a skim cut on both sides of this this uh, deck wood is three quarters a little over I'm going to take a 32nd off each uh, off each side to uh, basically smooth it out Here I'm just uh, piecing together the uh, the frame pieces. The uh, it's got uh, three 45 degree angles, of course. I mean there are 90 degree angles, but that's uh, doubling up 45. And uh, then this uh, double turn here. These angles here are 22 and a half degrees a piece. And all I'm doing is I'm taking the pieces that I cut to fit on top and I'm making uh, mirror images of them It'll, that, that, which will then be for the other side and when I say 22 and a half degrees if, if you've ever noticed there is a 22 and a half degree detent in your uh, chop saw. There's also uh, 3162. Uh, uh, this is used for crown molding. I want to be square or they'll look kind of goofy. So what I'll do is I'll I'll get to I'll keep them square as I go. And then I can adjust the angle of the last one to make it all fit. So this is what I mean. The other uh, three corners are square. But then when I get down to this last one, um, these two uh, 45s here are a little off. So I think I can walk this in. Let me take a little bit of this off. You just saw me uh, cutting the stock for our, our bead board for the uh, flat panel doors. This is what they're going to look like. Um, I'm pretty satisfied with the, the look of them. Let's uh, take a look at the process. Here's the next door we're, uh, we'll worry about. We already cut our stock to uh, 22 inches across this way. So we already have that dimension cut. So now what we need to do is uh, cut our panel at about 17 and 7 eighths. Let's do that. So I'll just transfer my 17 and 7 eighths measurement to my panel. I have my table saw sled. I have a big table saw sled so I can cut things as, as wide as uh, 30 inches. Okay, now I've got to trim off this half corner. Uh, pretty simple. I'll just put a straight edge where I want to cut it. 
Okay, I'm going to cut it off with my uh, cordless jigsaw, which is the best tool ever invented by man. Uh, but I want to give you a takeaway here. On these uh, higher dollar jigsaws, they have a different settings for the blade. And what happens is I've got it set on the number one position. That means the blade just goes up and down. If you pick one of these others, it cuts much faster, it's much more aggressive, but uh, it also, it, it's also a lot messier cut. If you're going to cut, like when I was using it on the fence, for example, I had it all the way over on three because I didn't care. I just wanted to go fast. But if you're going to be cutting plywood, uh, put it down to one. Okay, I have it in one position, so it, this should cut real, real smooth. Before I put it together, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sand it down because I want this thing to really look good. Um, so this is, this is kind of a, this is really set up for a paint finish, but it's clear enough. I'm going to stain it and so I'm going to sand it before I put it together so I'll have some nice crisp corners. <laughs> here I'll move the camera so you can see the, the difference here. This is nice and smooth. You can see the color is even different. And then this is the un, uh, unsanded side over here. Here's another takeaway. I'm going to try to use glue on this. Um, and I think I can get away with it because the, you know, I've been drying it now for a month. And I've got the, the uh, moisture content was about 17% a month ago. And now it's under 10 Well, that's 11.2. That's 9.2. Hopefully you can see this. This is the, uh, the plywood. I hope you can see the reading. It's not even getting a reading. There. That's 8.6. That's 6.6. .6. I got all the panels done. Now let's do a little staining. I'm staining the, uh, the whole project with the, this color called uh, English Chestnut. There's nothing special about it except this is the color I used on the uh, floor, the gunnels, and the seat. So I want everything, everything to be the same color. Staining done. What I'm doing now is attaching the covers using these, they're called hanger bolts. We've used them uh, when we built uh, tables. Uh, they screw in like a lag bolt, but then they got regular, regular threads on the other side that you can put a little knob on. And that'll make my uh, covers removable. Let me show, I, show you how I install them. But the first step is to uh, attach the door, uh, clamp the door to wherever you want it, and get it exactly where you want it. Because The next step is to put a, a pilot hole uh, through the cover and into the brace. and try to keep it level. Now I can remove the cover. Hardest part is keeping them keeping them level or perpendicular to the surface of the wood. Now I'll uh, ream out the hole I put in there.
Now, in a perfect world, my uh, door should fit right on those hanger bolts. And there's the cover with the two uh, removable thumb screws. Okay, let me put the other one on and we can keep rolling. I still got to apply spar varnish and all that stuff. But I'm curious. See what it's going to look like in the boat, aren't you? Let's set it up in the boat. Okay, we put it in here two or three times, so thing ought to fit. Okay, now I gotta put the panels on. There's a back panel. Here's the top. Well guys, sometimes projects just turn out better than you think they're going to. And uh, I think this engine cowling came out exactly, not exactly, actually it came out better than I thought it was going to. All right, that'll do it for another Memphis Monday, Memphis Monday 155. Uh, Next week we'll be uh, we'll do our final project, which will probably be the uh, dashboard to our cowling, and and that whole project will be like less than five minutes. Uh, you know, I'll show about five minutes of footage of it, and then the rest will be our our uh, mega spectacular year in review, where we're going to review all 52 weeks and all the projects therein. And just like we did last year. And so I think it'll be a pretty uh, mega gala event. Well, I can't think of anything else. Um, uh, the cowling turned out uh, certainly better than I thought it was going to. So we got that going for us. Can't think of anything else. Can you? Oh, yeah. Make sure you're back here next week for another exciting Memphis Monday. Thanks for playing along.